sometimes you don't find someone for a long time and then when you do it changes your whole life you find someone maybe it's just a youtube video and it's you saying it's still your mother set and it's you just pushing people and telling people to go get after it and people see that and all of a sudden it's like they get goosebumps their heart starts racing it's like you gave them a drug like you gave them fuel and then then they want to change their life and then they want to watch you tomorrow and then they want to watch you when they're at lunch break that's fuel and you literally can change a person's life through that because we need each other i mean this is it's one more piece of evidence that we need each other and that we have this sort of a very strange loose fitted community of all human beings together and when someone like you does something that's exceptional and says something that's exceptional and has these inspirational words it can change a person's whole life change their whole path change who they are i've gotten so many messages from people that say i lost 130 pounds you know, I did this. I got off sugar. I'm do, I'm 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 fucking running every day. I hit the gym five days a week now. I'm 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 a different person. I'm drinking water. I'm exercising. I take vitamins. I'm eating healthy. I, I got more juice. I got more energy. My whole life is different now. There's no personal satisfaction in accomplishments if nobody loves you. You're not gonna enjoy it. Love is the most important thing, and that sounds so cliche. But without love. It's all useless. Yeah. It's all useless. We all need each other. Yeah. We really do. There's something beautiful about that, though. You, know, like you, you, you can't just go it alone. You really do need each other. Through time and effort, you build a stronger human. You build a stronger body. You build a stronger mind. You build accomplishments and will and momentum. And then you look back... And you go, hey man, I'm not washing tables anymore. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not washing dishes. I'm not cutting lawns. I'm not digging ditches. I'm a different person now. You are not your past. You're you. You're you right now. You might have done some things you wish you hadn't done. Don't dwell on that. You learn from it. That's fine. But don't dwell on it. Just keep moving. Keep moving. You know, use it. Use it as fuel. Say never again. I get what I did wrong. But don't think that you're that person that made those mistakes. You're the person who's learned. I think that endurance, enduring something, and building up that ability to endure things, that's also a very important mechanism that you could apply to everyday life. Like that, the mechanism of understanding how to endure. Because a lot of people are just running from discomfort. They're running from it. They're just avoiding it. It's so easy to. And like, if you get distracted for a second, you're like, mm, yeah, mm, let me check my phone. You just start going through your phone and looking at bullshit, and you're just, distracting yourself from the tiniest frustration of boredom just the yeah. little we don't get bored anymore or if we get bored we get bored for these tiny amounts of time then you get distracted so your distraction is eliminating your boredom but the problem with that is like there's certain thoughts that only come to you when you're thinking when you're you don't have any input coming in when we're constantly looking at our phones the only input you're getting is input from other people and sometimes that's good sometimes you get good stuff out of that but it's like a diet of only fruit you know like hey mother yeah. you need some protein yeah <laughs> like this is you need you need to get some other things in your diet you know and um i think having discomfort in your diet like having it as a, a regular part of your life it minimizes the amount of uh, other kinds of bullshit and i think that insanity and, and greatness are next door neighbors and they borrow each other's sugar. There's, there's something about mastery, like true mastery, uh, that requires you to shut off massive areas of your life, personal areas, um, relationships, uh, education. My education was a joke. I mean, until I was 21 years old, until I started doing stand-up comedy, I didn't read books. I mean, I may, might've read a Stephen King book here and there for to kill time while I was on the train on my way to training. Uh, but there was no uh, there's no desire to educate myself if I was educating myself It was maybe reading uh, The book of five rings to mm -hmm. learn better strategy to be a better fighter. That was all it was or Was there ever a point where you said I'm a little out of balance. I need to go the other way Well, I realized I was a flawed person for sure, you know, and I think in realizing that you're a flawed person What it, helped you realize that just fucking up? <laughs> just being an idiot, you know, realizing, you know, girls would get mad at me or maybe guys would get mad at me, whatever it was. I realized that I had flaws, you know, uh -huh. I, I knew, I knew that, uh, I was, and then also failing at comedy. 
one of the um, hardest things to do is to go from being really great at something to sucking at something. And that's something that you suck at is now your path. You know, and that's what I found myself in comedy. You know, I, I could get laughs every now and then, but I knew I wasn't anything special. I knew I was terrible. And there was something exciting about being terrible because it, I had potential, because there was potential for growth. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a, if, you, if you start doing it and you're great at it, like, naturally, like, maybe I wouldn't have had the motivation to do it as a living for 25 years like sure. I've done. I don't know. But at that time, you know, making that transition from martial arts competition to uh, being a comedian, that's when I started going down the road of balance and started trying to balance myself as a person. And I started trying to uh, almost educate myself to have more things to talk about on stage. And then along the way, my curiosity started to blossom. And then I started to just be interested in things for being interested in them. And as I got better as a comedian, I became less worried about what other people thought about me and more worried about just improving and, and keeping, you know, keeping this sort of momentum going. And as I relaxed more, you know, in having some success in life and sort of uh, not worrying about bills as much, not worrying about my future, then I started to explore altered states of consciousness, and then I really started opening up the door to the whole yin and the yang. Life is filled with so many different kinds of experiences that are available, and that's one of the things that you sort of open up to when you relax. When you relax and you know you don't worry about what you look like, you don't worry about what you sound like, you don't worry about how, how people feel about you, because you've thought all, uh, about all these different things on your own, and you've kind of corrected as many things as you can correct given that time period, but you, you, you feel comfortable that you're on a good path, mm -hmm. you know, then you sort of can entertain ideas that maybe you wouldn't if you were insecure sure. or more insecure. You know, I think we're all, I think you have to be insecure if you're finite. We're worried about death. We're, we're worried about disease. We're worried about loved ones. We're, we're always going to be in a certain sense insecure. You know, we're worried about being sexually attractive. We're worried about being uh, socially interesting. Sure. You know, there's always going to be some form of insecurity, but that's also part of the balance of life too. It's like you don't ever get to bliss. You know, what you get to do is chase bliss. You get to enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. The moment is amazing and it'll go away and you'll be fucking tired and you got to get up, you know, and you got to drive in traffic and you're not going to like it. And you got to, you know, do some shit you don't want to do. There's a lot of times where I work out where I don't want to, yep. you know, and I make myself do it. If I was living in bliss, I'd be just be a fat fuck sitting on the couch, <laughs> you know, thinking that I don't want to do that. My life is about enjoyment. No, there's enjoyment in doing things you don't enjoy. Joy.